Good morning. Welcome to First United Methodist Church. We're glad to see all of you this morning. And if you're a guest with us today, we're especially glad you're here. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy our worship time together. Our ushers are getting ready to bring the attendance pads down. I want to ask that all of you take a moment, register there your attendance, so we just know who's there. Uh, we thank you for the information you do provide us, though. And by the way, if you have a change in your email address, we'd really appreciate you updating us there on those uh, uh, sheets. That just uh, keeps us up to date, and we, we appreciate that information. While you're taking care of all that, a couple of things I wanted to mention that are in your bulletin. I do want to say a thank you to everyone who helped make yesterday's Human Trafficking Conference a wonderful success. We met yesterday, had over 130 people here, uh, and uh, we spent the day learning, gaining great information. Uh, it's a sad, somebody said it's a sad topic, but it was a good day. And uh, it's a tragic to topic uh, that if slavery continues to go on in our world, in our country, and right here in our own community. And so uh, we heard some powerful stories yesterday about things that are going on that, uh, quite honestly, I was totally clueless about. But it was a good day, and we hope to hear more about that as time goes on. Also, uh, those of you in the balcony, Bill, can you see me? You got, you're sitting in the light up there now. <laughs> but our window has come back, uh, our missing window. It's being installed even as we speak. Well, not right at the moment, but anyway, I see a board sticking out, so it's still in the in process. But uh, that window is, is uh, back, and this one up here is getting ready to go away. And then we'll only have one more window to do. But we give thanks for that, and thank you for your support. And by the way, as always, if you see somebody here you don't know and you've seen them for a long time and you think, oh gosh, I know that person, but ask them their name, okay? You have permission, because I need that permission from you to always be doing that, because I want we want to know each other by name, and that's so important. One announcement I did overlook, and that is the uh, United Methodist Women are doing their Grandparents' Day booklet, and uh, the deadline for that is this Wednesday, August the 27th, and if you'd like to help be a sponsor of that, uh, please uh, pick up uh, uh, Ken and the ushers have the brochure, have the, uh, well, what about the form, thank you, at the back door. When you leave today, pick one up and uh, be a part of that. That's a great, great, great opportunity. Friends, we gather together today to celebrate and worship the Lord. So let's prepare our hearts now to go to God and worship.
morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, so let's truly rejoice and be glad in it. Let's stand and join in the call to worship in your bulletin. Come to the house of the Lord. Come with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service. God is calling us to be a part of the healing ministry of this world. We come today not sure if we are the ones for the job. We come with our concerns and our fears when it comes to following God. God is calling us to follow Him and to help heal this world. Come, let us offer our lives in service to God. Let us praise God and serve by helping others in need. Amen. And now remain standing and join in the hymns that are marked in your bulletin.
gather in this place today and we give thanks that we can join with our sisters and brothers to celebrate and give thanks for our blessings to also bring to the Lord our concerns and our needs. And so I invite you now to bow your heads and join me as we pray. Holy and loving God, as we gather in this place today, we give thanks for the abundance of your blessing upon our lives. We thank you, O oh God, uh, for your presence that never leaves us. And in those times when we, we wonder, we stand amazed, and sometimes even afraid, you are there. Today we gather and we give thanks that we're a blessed people, blessed to be a blessing. And today as we worship you, we give thanks that we can join with our sisters and brothers in praising you and, 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 and knowing that you are our Lord and our Savior. Today as we pray, we bring to you our burdens and our concerns, just as you ask us to do. Lord, we have lots of needs. We think about the sick and the hurting and we pray for them and we know that you are the great physician and today our, our hearts are raised to you with the names of so many that we think about family friends neighbors and many many others oh God whom we don't have a clue about but because we are your children you know you know us all we thank you for those that you have gifted with the gift of healing. And we ask for the wisdom and divine guidance to be upon them. And we ask you, O oh Lord, that you would bless us, that we could be instruments of that healing as well. We pray for those that struggle with grief today. And we pray that your comfort and your love would be upon them. And Lord, as we worship here, we thank you for the guidance and the wisdom that you give us in our everyday life, not only in the big decisions that we must make, but also, O Lord, in our day-to-day -day lives. You are ours, O God. You are our Savior. And today, we claim you as God, creator of all. And we ask that you bless our world, our nation, and its leaders, and protect those who protect us. O God, what a blessing it is to be in your house this day and to share and celebrate in the wonderful love of Christ. Now, Lord, bless this church. Bless its ministries and missions as it reaches out beyond these walls to our community, to our nation and world. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the blessing you are to us as we now join our voices and we share together the prayer that you taught your own disciples to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Last week I stood before you and shared some wonderful celebrational news, if you will about your faithfulness in, our, in your giving. We talked about the 90-day tithe adventure. I want to share with you one more today, and that is that because of your giving, uh, we have been able to help and support uh, a, an active ministry in this community called the Gideons. Many of you are familiar with the Gideons, and uh, we appreciate their good work. Many of you are involved directly with the Gideons International, and we're glad for that. And today, uh, David Clinkenbeard is with us, and we're glad to have him. You know David, he's not a stranger to First Church, but we welcome him today to kind of bring you up to date on what they've been able to do because of some of your faithfulness. So, David, we welcome you this day, and may God bless you, sir. Thank you. Let me get this dip up out of your way here. <coughs> morning. It's great to be back again uh, this year sharing with the good folks of uh, First United Methodist Church. 
You know, within our community, there's over 80 evangelical uh, churches. And I'm here to say that because of your faithful support year after year, uh, First United Methodist Church is like ranks in the, the top three churches that support us on a yearly basis. And for that, we are eternally grateful. You know, I could stand before you and, and tell you that Giddings are in 197 countries around the world, and we are. I could also tell you that we provide God's word in 99 languages. We do. I could also tell you that uh, at the end of May of this year, Giddings International distributed over 81 million copies of God's word worldwide, and we did. But I'm here this morning to tell you, because you are so familiar with the Gideon ministry, I wanted you to feel a personal note about how vital your role is in this ministry. Because I stand before you to tell you that we cannot do what we do without you. This testimony just came to us less than a month ago from Glenn Castile took place in 1980. Glenn was serving as a law enforcement official with the Kentucky Department of Transportation. He was out on patrol one day and the dispatch came across his radio saying that there was an automobile accident with multiple injuries outside of Hazard, Kentucky. So Glenn raced to the scene and sure enough when he got there he saw two cars fully engaged. One car had a family of five in it Fortunately, there were no serious in, uh, injuries in that car. However, the other car had a sole driver whose fate was not uh, as fortunate. As the uh, first responders came and tried to remove the driver from the car, uh, he was conscious but could not speak and in a uh, very serious condition. As uh, he laid on the pavement and they were waiting for the ambulance and the EMT to arrive, Glenn looked down and realized the urgency of the situation. And so Glenn reached into his pocket and he pulled out his Gideon New Testament. And see, the importance of a Gideon New Testament, unlike other testaments that you might buy in the store, is in the back there are specific scriptures that helps either you or allows you to relate to someone else the gospel story. And so Glenn took this and began reading. It's kind of like the uh, Roman road to salvation. Uh, it starts out with John 3.16. Then it talks about uh, for all of sin and come short of the glory of God for the wages of sin is death and so forth. And so because that Glenn had this in his pocket, he began to reach out to this man as he was lying on the pavement dying. And he said, the question that any one of us could ask anybody around the world that would have the greatest impact on their lives, and that is, do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? And the man who could not speak shook his head no. And so he prayed over him and he began going over these scriptures with the man and asked him, would he like to confess his sins to Jesus Christ? And the man shook his head, yes. And he said, do you confess your sins? Do you accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and ask him to come into your life? And the man shook his head, yes. And so Glenn prayed again and welcomed him into the family of God as a child of God's at that moment. About that time, the ambulance showed up, the EMT workers came and placed him in a gurney, and as they were placing this man into the ambulance, he took his last breath. At that moment, the power of the Holy Spirit was with Glenn, who led him to draw out his Gideon Testament and share with that dying man who had moments to, to live the story of Jesus. How does that happen? Well, in part, it happens because some church somewhere in Kentucky gave a generous donation to the Giddings International. 
that allowed some local Gideon camp to order scriptures and had a distribution that they gave to emergency service personnel, police, firemen, EMT workers. We give to hospitals, we give to schools, to the military, doctor's offices, the list goes on and on. What I want you to see this morning is the only way Glenn could have witnessed to that man using a Gideon Testament was because of faithful believers in Christ like yourselves who support the Gideon ministry. We cannot do what we do without you as partakers in this ministry. So I stand before you this morning thanking you from the Frankfurt Gideons and Gideons International that First United Methodist Church year after year after year support this ministry. And because of that, everyone sitting here has taken an active part in seeing part of those 81 million scriptures that were placed at the end of May 2014. So thank you for your gift this year and thank you for your continued support and your prayers to the Gideon ministry. Thank you so much and appreciate that. You, you might know that our outreach team has already met and, uh, and uh, have offered a, a gift of over $1,000 to uh, Gideon's International on your behalf. And as you give, part of your dollar goes to that. So we all do uh, participate in that and you should feel good about it. Thank you, David. Dow, thank you and others who work with Gideon's International. And God bless you. Good morning, everybody. Wow, what a crowd. Who's over there? Hey, bud. Well, you know, the last couple of weeks, we've had pieces of wood sitting here. And remember that first week, I got a splinter in my finger and it hurt. And I was whining and crying. And, and then, and then uh, we had this board that looked like, well, it looked like a table. And now we got this. Yeah, and we had shavings everywhere. That's right. And now we've got this, and I believe it's a table. What do you think? Yeah, I think so, too. But, you know, I was just looking at this, though. Look at that. It's not attached. So I don't know if it's a table. Could this be a field goal, you think? No, no. Okay, just checking. Just checking. Well, you know, we'll find out what it is probably next week, but sometimes it's fun to guess and try to figure out things. Sometimes it could be a big chair. We'll figure it out. We want to thank Mr. Doug for working on it, though, because he's really doing a great job. But it amazes me. You remember I told you how God can take rough pieces, sometimes we're kind of rough, too, and smooth us out and make us into what God needs us to be. And that's kind of what we're talking about today with our, with our lesson about what God needs us to do. Every one of you has something special that you can do in our world today. You are gifted. Some of you can talk, some of you can play, some of you can do all kinds of things. And that's, that's really important. And same thing with all these people out here. We're all given something to do. And so, and it's called our mission, our life mission. And that's what I'm going to talk about to your families today. You all have something to do. That's right, exactly. So, we got to figure it out. And you know what the job of the church is to do? It's to help us figure it out. You may not know right now. Some people out here don't know what their job is just yet. But we're all learning together and God will teach us. Let's pray together, can we? Dear God, we thank you for your call upon our lives. You know our names and you love us and we give thanks for that. And so hold our children now, hold their families. We thank you for them and ask your blessing. And it's in the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys can go to Little Church. I think... You don't want to go today? Okay. Sorry. And now please stand and join in hymn 474.
Be seated. I want to thank the Lawhorns for doing little church today. There was some of us thought, uh oh, where are they? But they were out there getting ready, so they were ready for us, and that's great. Let's pray together. Wonderful God, thank you that we can uh, join together again and uh, open the Word and learn from it. And as we do, we pray that the meditation of our hearts and the words of my mouth will be acceptable to you. It's in Christ's wonderful name we pray. Amen. Well, as you know, friends, all summer we've been looking at the series called Essentials for Living. And we've looked at how we need people to live with. We've looked at how we needed power to live on. We've looked at how all, uh, some of the principles that we live by and a lot of other essentials. And today we draw to a conclusion our series on essentials for living with how we need a purpose to live for. Thank you for not applauding. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> Sometimes when you say, this is the last one, everybody goes, hee -haw, you know, so... Anyway, well, as I told the children, we're talking about our life mission and our purpose, and we talk a lot about purposes here at First Church, how we're to glorify God by connecting people to Jesus Christ through spiritual nourishment and dynamic outreach. And uh, each of us has our own life mission. Everybody's life mission is unique. Uh, only you can fulfill your mission, only I can do mine. I can't do yours and you can't do mine. And the Bible says it like this, in your note pages there, in Acts 20, it talks about, Paul's talking, he says, the most important thing that is that I complete my mission, the work that the Lord Jesus gave me to tell people the good news about God's grace. Part of our life mission, my friends, is that we invite people into God's family. So get out your note page here and let's get started as we walk through this. The first thing is my mission. My mission. And that is to invite other people into God's family. That's my mission. Jesus said in John 20, verse 21, As the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. Now, we're, what is he sending us to do? Well, if you turn over into Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, in Samaria, and in every part of the world. That one verse, friends, tells us what we're supposed to do and where we're supposed to do it. Now, at first it says you'll be my witnesses. What does it mean to be a witness? A witness is someone who shares uh, their personal experience. I saw this, I heard that, I watched that. Witnessing is simply uh, sharing what God has done in your life, your life or my life. Uh, it's not being a theological expert, friends. It's not being the preacher. You know, actually, when you, you are far more effective at sharing your witness than I am. I mean, when I talk about Jesus, people say, well, you're the paid professional. You're supposed to talk about Jesus. But when you talk about Christ, about what Christ has done in your life, friends, that's a whole nother ballgame. So, we are to talk or share the good news of Christ. Now, where are we supposed to do this? Well, in Acts 1 verse 8, it says, let's go back and look at it again. It says, in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and every part of the world. Does that mean that we're supposed to get on a plane when we get done with church here and let's go to Jerusalem? No, that's not what it's saying. Okay, where were the disciples and Jesus when, the, when this was said? Do you remember? They were in Jerusalem, right? And so the idea is you start where you are. That's the point, that's the starting point here. What is your Jerusalem, friends? Well, it's your family, it's your friends, it's your co-workers. That's your Jerusalem, and you start where you live. And then it says, go on to Judea. And Judea is kind of like the county, if you will. And what is our Judea? Well, for the sake of argument, let's just say Franklin County. And uh, the question is, is there anybody here in Franklin County that needs to hear the good news of Jesus Christ? What do you think? Hmm? And then it says we're supposed to go on to Samaria. And that's like the county next door. But the Samaritans, friends, were culturally and eth ethnically different than the disciples. And so the point here is that the third place that we're to go is to people of different culture, different language, different ethnic group than ourselves. Do you know anybody who speaks a different language, say, than you do? Anybody? Yeah? Sure. Okay. Do you know right now that your church, this church, 
is involved in reaching out to persons that are, speak his, uh, a Spanish. Uh, we have a pastor, Reverend Michael Rojas Perez, who is out part of our Frankfurt uh, district, who is out right now. Uh, starting young churches, small house churches of Spanish people, uh, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. And it's growing by leaps and bounds. Again, because of your faithfulness. We're, we're active. We're doing that. And then it says, go to the ends of the world. And I'll just say this. Today, more than ever before, I think going to the ends of the world is a legitimate opportunity for every one of us at some point in our lives. So, what's my mission? Well, the mission is to invite others into God's family. So, what are we supposed to share? Let's go on to number two. Here, we share my message. Write that down. My message. And the message is good news. How many of you like to get good news? Anybody? How many of you like to go to the doctor and get good news? Yeah, well, yeah, okay. So, we all like that. But that's what we're called to share. In Mark 16, it says, Proclaim the good news to everyone, everywhere. You look at Romans 1, verse 17, it says, The good news shows how, God's, how God makes people right with himself, that it begins and ends with faith. As the scripture says, those who are right with God will live, here it is, live by trusting him. It doesn't say you will be right with God by uh, being perfect, by never not sinning, by doing certain rituals, but it says you will do it by trusting in God. Now let me say something while I'm here, and this is kind of a review, but let me just say that when we trust our lives to Jesus Christ, there are three incredible, fabulous, wonderful benefits that happen in our lives. Let me give them to you real quick. They're not in your note page, but number one is simply this. You get forgiveness of your sins. You get forgiveness of your sins. Number two, God takes care of our present and God gives us a purpose to live for. And the third thing is we get a home for our future. A home called, anybody know? Heaven. That's right. And it's so important, friends. I know people who say, well, I think I'm going to heaven. You what? I th I'm going to heaven. I think. You know, we wonder about that. Friends, heaven is too important not to be sure. You know, we need to know for sure. And if we, a lot of people think, well, if I do more good in my life than I do bad, then God's going to grade on a curve. And when I get up there, he'll go, you know, you barely made it, but come on in. Friends, it's just not going to work that way. There's only one way that you and I are ever going to get into heaven. Because there's nobody perfect here. We're going to have to get in on somebody else's ticket. And we thank God today that God has provided us with Jesus Christ. And through that life and death and resurrection of Christ, we have hope. You know, in Romans 6, it says God's free gift. And that's critical. God's free gift is eternal life through Jesus Christ. It means, friends, you can't earn it, you can't work for it, and you can't own it in any way. It's a free gift just for you. And that's the message, the good news, friends. And why do we share it? Well, you know, this is a little different now. Why should we care if other people around me know the good news? Well, what's your motive? This is the third one, my motive. Write that down, my motive, M-O-T-I-V-E, my motive. And what's our motive? It's love. Motive is, for our mission is love, love for Christ, and love for other people. In 2 Corinthians 5 verse 14 it says, For the love of Christ compels us. What happens to you when you're compelled to do something? Do you sit back and go, well, somebody else will do it, I guess. No. When you're compelled to do something, you're motivated to get up and do it. Okay? Everybody matters to God, my friends. God has never made a person that he didn't love. God made some people, well, maybe I don't care for it too much, but, you know, that's okay. Friends, we're all in this together, and part of the way that we change lives is through our love and through the love that Christ gives us. We change a culture. You know, there's a lot of frustration and anger in our society right now, and we change that, I believe, through the love of Christ, one person at a time. You say, well, Phil, you know, you're talking about me sharing my witness. And that makes me a little nervous. I get a little, I'm almost afraid. Well, you have good company. The Apostle Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 7 and 8, he said, The Holy Spirit doesn't want you to be afraid of people, 
but to be wise and strong and to love them and enjoy being with him. And if you will stir up this inner power, do you hear this? If you will stir up this inner power, you will never be afraid to tell others about the Lord. So what are we reading here, friends? We're finding that the antidote to fear is love. Are you with me? The reason why we don't share the good news often, friends, is because we don't have enough love for other people. We don't love them enough to want, want to be sure they want to get into heaven. But you know, I think about that. How much love do I have? If a building is on fire and my children are in it, I'm going in. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter how big the flames are. If my kids are in there, I'm going in. And you can say, Phil, don't go. You're crazy. You'll get burned. I am not listening to you. I'm going in. We would all do that same thing. But friends, it's the same thing with our faith. You know, it's not like we're trying to give other people cancer or trying to sell them swampland in Florida. We're trying to share the greatest news, the life-saving news of Jesus Christ with the world. And so the question becomes, is anybody, is anybody going to be in the heaven because of you? Hmm? So how do we fulfill our mission? Well, that's the last one there. Here's the, here it is. It's my method. Write that down. My method. My method. Two things. You've got to show it and you've got to share it. You've got to show it and share it. Remember in school we had that thing called the show and tell? Remember that? Yeah, a lot of you are not yet. That was my favorite day in school when we did that. But that's what God wants us to do. God wants us to visualize it with our life and verbalize it with our mouth. Walk the walk, talk the talk. In Colossians 3, it says, Whatever you do or say, let it be as a representative of the Lord Jesus. We need to be ex an example of God's love first. We need to live in a way that demonstrates God's love. People don't care, friends. They don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. You've heard that before. And not only that, but we need to tell it. Tell the good news verbally. In Colossians, back again to Colossians 4, verse 5. Make the most of your chances to tell others the good news. It's, it's not that we just live it, friends. We've got to tell it too. Do you get it? All right, let's go on. So how do we get started? Well, I'm going to tell you today, my friends, that it all begins with our spiritual base. Our spiritual base. And the letters of base stand for certain things. The B stands for believe. Write, there, write it down. It stands for believe. We've got to believe, friends, that Jesus Christ died on the cross and showed that he was God by coming back to life. The question is, do you believe? Hmm? The A, it stands for accept. First we believe, then we accept. We need to accept God's free forgiveness for our sins. Can we accept that? My question is, why would you reject it? You know, if, if, if we've got that, then we're almost there. The S, it stands for switch. Write that down, switch. We've got to switch to God's plan for our life. We, we, that means we're going to, uh, going to say, you know, I'm no longer going to do what I want to do, but I'm going to do what God has created for me to do. I want to know God's purpose for my life. And from now on, I'm going to let God call the shots, not me. When we became a Christian, my friends, let me tell you, we put on a new sign. It says, under new management. And we do that when Christ comes into our life. Somebody else is planning our life now. And that's a good thing. So you got believe, accept, and switch. And the E stands for express. Express. We express our desire for Christ to be the director of our life, the manager. The, the Bible uses another word. The Bible uses the word Lord. Is Christ the Lord of your life today? My friends, you know, this is so important. I want to pause here just for a moment, and I'd like to have a prayer. And I'd like to pray, if you believe in those four steps that you can believe and accept and switch and express, then I want to invite you to pray with me. And, and this prayer is a simple prayer. So you can pray it, out, you can repeat it in your hearts. Don't do it out loud, but just do it in your hearts. And I want you to look at your own life as we pray. Let, will you bow your heads? I'm not looking at you. Just, just, this is a short prayer, but just, just say these words in your heart. Dear God, 
I believe you sent your son Jesus to die for my sins so that I could be forgiven I'm sorry for my sins and I want to live the rest of my life the way you want me to please Lord please put your spirit in my life to direct me amen did you pray that prayer if you did I want to say to you that you have crossed the line but you know that's what it means to put Christ in our life it's that simple and yet friends now we've got to move on to action and do what God has called us to do you may not understand it all it's like a baby born into a family. The baby doesn't understand everything. But we as the church have a responsibility to teach and encourage and hold each other accountable as we grow. Let me tell you something. I was talking to one of our church leaders just a few weeks ago. And she told me the most powerful story. We were just having this conversation and all of a sudden it got real serious. She said to me, she said, Dr. Phil, she said, I've been a Christian for many years. But I've never led anybody to Christ. I said, well, tell me more about that. And she said, well, my dad is not a believer. And we weren't very close. And after a lot of prayer, I decided that, my, that God wanted me to call my dad and to have a conversation with him. And so I did. I picked up the phone and I called him. And I explained on the phone what, what was going on. And, and, and we prayed. And she said, Phil, the next sound that I heard was my dad weeping because he had just, he had just given his life to Jesus. And she said it through the tears that she was shedding then. She said, she said Phil, if I hadn't listened to the prompting of God, my dad wouldn't be going to heaven going to hell my family let me ask you a question and I mean this with all sincerity who is it that God has brought into your family into your life right now that God expects you to share the good news with my friends, God wants to use all of us. You know, in Psalm 67, we get our marching orders. It is simply this. Send us around the world with the news of your saving power and your eternal plan for all humankind. Let's pray together. Holy God, we thank you that you know our lives and you know the people in our lives. You know the message that we have, each of us, to share about how you have been with us. It's not always about sharing the easy road. It's about sharing how we've gone through the tough times and emerged victorious on the other end. But God, sometimes others need to hear that story. They need to know that we are more than conquerors through you in Christ. And so, Lord, hold us this day. Wherever we may be in our station in life, may we always glorify you and give you the credit and the thanksgiving for all that takes place. Thank you, Lord, for this word. And it's in the name of Christ we pray. Amen. My friends, I want to invite you to stand with me now. And join with me as we share together our affirmation of faith in response to the word. Today we share the modern affirmation found on page 885 of your hymnal. Let's stand. <clears throat> Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith, let's now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. 
we believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love, as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord, to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. Be seated. Friends, our ushers are coming forward now, so let's prepare our hearts to offer our gifts and our tithes to Almighty God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we give back to you only a portion of what you have given us. You are truly a generous God. We know our tithes and our offerings support not only this church and its mission, but also ministries around this hurting world. Bless the gift and the giver to your kingdom's work. In Jesus' name, amen.
join together in singing our closing hymn number 569, verses 1 and 4 of We've a Story to Tell to the Nations. You send us out, O oh God, with a great challenge, and now we go. We go in the knowledge that your presence is always with us. We thank you in advance for giving us now your peace, peace that passes all understanding. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. God bless all of you.